It's an old house, sir. We had so many problems about it. He always would tell me that, to fix it myself. To fix it myself? Myself? Come on. All right, the next matter is Louis Duran versus Jacqueline Aguilar and Leandro Castro. This is file 24219SC. Uh, this is related to an earlier landlord tenant matter. Uh, first thing we're going to do is put everybody under oath. So, we all please raise your right hand. You all swear or affirm any testimony you're about to give here will be true to the best of your knowledge and belief. Do you? Yes, sir. All right, and everybody heard my instructions. You're ready to proceed at this time? Yes, sir. I have to put this up on my screen. I probably should have printed this. Mr. Duran, was there a landlord tenant case? Uh, towards them, no. All right. All right. This is a. Oops. Wrong case. The claim for $1,540.94. I've got a number of questions about this. Uh, the Aguilars rented a property from Mr. Duran and they left. And uh, I don't know if they left voluntarily or there was a notice to quit. Anyway, they moved out back in November of 2023. The defendants were demanding their security deposit at the time of move out. And that's not how it works. Neither party here probably complied with the Landlord-Tenant Relationship Act, which is the security deposit law. When the defendants move out under the law, they're supposed to provide their forwarding address in writing within four days of their moving. After moving, the landlord is supposed to send a security deposit notice, either returning the security deposit or citing the reasons why they are not returning the security deposit. And uh, <clears throat> I don't think any of that was done here. Did they ever give you a forwarding address? Never, Your Honor. Um, I told her that day when they were demanding, um, I, I would need your forwarding address so I could send you a checklist and deduct what's going to be deducted and they never provided for it. All right. And then was it after they left, you had property inspections and the inspector pointed out a number of defects? Correct. All right. Well, your claim is for $1,540. And frankly, I'm having kind of trouble figuring out how we get to that number. So uh, how do we get to $1,540? So um, they left roaches behind, Your Honor. So I had to get a year service through Oregon. Uh, the yearly cost of that is $642.18. Um, Along with the roaches, uh, I got rid of the appliances, the refrigerator, um, the stove wasn't working when they left. Um, so I had to go and get uh, new appliances. Uh, total for new appliances is $1,373.76. And then, so prior for them moving out, I had a city inspection and Tim Crayball, um, he provided the stuff that needed to be fixed. And that's what I provided for you from the city. But after they moved out is where more um, issues came up. And I had Tim came, come back and sure enough, he told me that I needed to fix them. So I hired a contractor and for his labor was $650.
Were there any unpaid rent? No, they they paid everything. All right, so let's add this up. 642.18 plus 1373.76 plus 650 equals 266594. Correct, Your Honor. And at the time of their initial move in, their security deposit was of $1,125, if you want to reduce that from that amount. Gives that figure fifteen hundred forty dollars ninety four cents. All right, now that seems pretty straightforward. <clears throat> they left. You're billing them for a year worth of work and service. They left. You bought brand new appliances to Correct. replace the used appliances were there, and you want them to pay for brand new appliances. Also, there was stuff done, and you're blaming everything that was done on them. And uh, so let's hear their side of the story. Um, so that's how he came up with it. 642 for Orkin, 1373.76 for brand new appliances, $650 for contracting work, minus your security deposit, which can be applied to this sort of thing gives us that total. So let me ask you a couple of questions. When you moved, did you ever give him your forwarding address in writing? We didn't seem like we had it to, sir, because... We were new to that. We didn't know we had to do that. Because with the past landlord that we had, we didn't have to do that. He didn't ask for our previous... Uh, address or anything like that. Well, that's how it works. And so you don't auto automatically get your security deposit back. You move out, you give your foreign address in writing, your landlord inspects the property, determines whether there's any rent owed, and, um, and uh, then says either here's your deposit back or here's how much I took out of it or here's how much you owe me. All right, so you move, you didn't give your forwarding address, but you want your deposit back. He says, I use your deposit to pay this stuff, and there's a shortfall. So what's your take on this? I will actually, I actually have proof. I did a mistake. I called today in the courtroom to see if we could come in, but they said it was through Zoom or this room where their computer, but I wanted to come in because I actually have proof and messages where I did not do anything to his stove. The stove was working perfectly because his brother went on a Thursday, the day that he was at the hospital with his baby, Luis was in Fort Wayne, his brother came and we spoke and I have messages where he says that the stove was working and all he wanted me to do was clean the house perfectly. And it also talks about how Luis has poor communication with his mom and didn't know what was going on with the house and how the past renter left the con the house in conditions. He, she didn't know about that. So that's well, new let to me, her. Let me, let me stop you for a minute. You're always welcome to come in. Where are you now? Looks like you're in some sort of cramped space. Oh, no, I'm in my we're kitchen. In the kitchen. It just oh, okay. Yeah, we don't have that much light. Now we would have to go outside. Okay. Well, I'm sorry you got that take. Zoom is fine, but you also could have come in live. Okay. Uh, all right. So anyway, are you saying when did you rent this property from when to when? Uh, the first time that I moved in was November 1st of 2023. No, oh. 2022. 2022. Yeah. And then we moved out November 10th, 2023. We, the purpose we moved out was because we found out that we were pregnant and he, I was not, I was going to stop working. We were paying too much on rent. We already have a toddler. It was just for 1500 for us to pay that, it was not going to be enough. So we found something better and that's why we decided to move. I have proof of also that I did not do any damages to the house. The only damages that I did was broke a window in the kitchen that I accidentally opened it and it has like these little like notches that you have to like go in and I didn't put it in right and it fell and it shattered and I have proof and receipts that I bought well, he, he's one. not asking for anything for that 
Um, so what about the roaches? They were already there. When he knew about that. Where's your proof? You have proof? Proof it. <laughs> Just oh, a minute, Mr. Proof. Duran. This is my courtroom, not yours. All right. Uh, I, I wasn't sure that I had to record everything that I talked to him about, everything. I even asked him for a new fridge because it wasn't cooling anymore. It wasn't shutting right. And he didn't do he anything didn't do about, it. about it. He left it three months without a, a stove fan. Uh, he didn't fix it until inspection came. It was just without a heater with my, my baby. Yeah, with, it was I eight have, months. I have proof of that that he left it without a heater in winter. For a couple December months. December and okay, January. Right. Oh, slow, slow down. Um, I can only keep up so much in one issue at a time. All right. First of all, we're talking about roaches. Um, you're saying when you moved in in November of twenty two, there were already roaches in the premises. Yes, he knew about Did that. You? All right. They How do you know he knew about it? Uh, because we talked about it with, with him. He knew about that. We just bombed them, and they went away for a little bit, and then they came back. And it started in the restroom. That's where it started. That's where they were just bad. And the past landlord, the past renter, I had spoken to her, and she said that she had bombed, too, because she was dealing with them. What was her name? Anayeli Soto. All right. So when did you first notice them when you got there? Probably like not, not the first month. It was like probably in the once we started moving in. And it's like probably like the middle of November, December. And when did you tell him about it? That's in time. Not right away. Yeah, the right away. <laughs> did he provide you with the bombs or did you do that yourself? You know, no, we, we did, did that uh, ourselves. So we really didn't want to bother them that much. Something small that we can do, you know? All right. Now let's talk about the appliances. I want to nail this down. <laughs> um, it's hard to... Oops. All right, you bought a gas range, a freezer refrigerator, thirteen ninety six. All right, so she contends a the stove was working, and b it wasn't brand new. Uh, then yep. regarding the freezer refrigerator, um, your Demanding they buy you a brand new freezer refrigerator. Um, tell me about the stove first, Ms. Aguilar. So some of the just, stuff. Just a minute. I'm, I'll come back oh, to I'm you. Sorry. All right. What do you know about the stove? It was working fine. The the oven was working fine. The stove was working fine because I even turned it on for his brother. And all he wanted me to do is take off the grease from it that was stuck to it. But all that grease was what I said. It was I went three months without the fan on the stove. So obviously it has to get greasy. But I would clean it. And I cleaned it before I left. All right. All right. Tell me about the refrigerator. It, it was old, sir. It was already old. I don't know how it's, long that it's was. been. Uh, that stuff has been there since they were there. The other people were there. I don't know. It was. We even told them about it. That it was not closing right. That it was all not right, freezing right. right. So you told them the refrigerator didn't work, correct? Yeah, yeah, they knew about that. I even told them before I moved out. I'm that. like, you might not have to get like you might have to get a new fridge because it's not it's cooling not right working. for me for the new renters that are going to rent it. I was even nicely to tell him again to like he needs to buy a new fridge. I don't see the way it, the the. All right. Of it. Well, let's hear his side of the story. Tell me about the stove and then the refrigerator. So yeah, they did uh, when. They went with my brother, um, and she told me I was in Fort Wayne because my son was born prematurely. I was away, and I told him and my mom, you know, like, handle everything because they gave me plenty of time. Like, hey, Luis, we're going to be moving out, moving out possibly in November. But if not, we want to stay another month just so we get our new place figured out because according to them, they had bought a trailer. I'm like, no, that's fine. So I was away, you know, with my baby, and that's where the whole mix-up was. 
And my, my brother did, in fact, tell me, you know, the stove was working. He just told them to clean it. Well, when I, on the day of the incident where they were demanding their direct deposit that exact same day, they both showed up to the house and they themselves couldn't even turn on the stove. The pilots weren't working or anything. They pulled the stove out just to see if um, the back lines, the gas lines were anything. Maybe if I had tamper with it or, but I didn't, I didn't do anything with them. I let them do their thing and they themselves did not get the pilot to turn on. She said she used some degreaser or cleaner, which in fact she did. She could have uh, ruined those. And when I got the inspector to come out after we rehabbed the uh, entire house, that's what it was. He said that certain chemicals can be used on gas stoves. Where's the proof of the chemicals that I bought? Well, there is none. Same thing to you. You don't just blurt stuff out. I'll give you a chance to speak. Um, all right, so it did work, then it didn't work. So did you try to get it repaired? You just bought a new one. We did. Um, the contractor that I hired to rehab the house once they were moved out, they had a mechanical Danbury out of, out of colon. They were working on this next door house. And that day he happened to be working on this AC unit outside. So I went ahead and talked to him. I'm like, can you check this stove out for me and everything? He came out and exact same thing he said that it was something internal with the stove where he would have to take it apart and everything um and he would get back with me well the next day when the contractor was working there he said that when they pushed the stove back into place um you know against the wall that's when the whole colony of roaches came out they really pulled it out All right, what can you tell me about the refrigerator? The refrigerator was working fine. So they said they they lived there for a year, a little bit over a year. During that time frame, Your Honor, they had three inspections with the city, with Tim Crayball. We walked through that entire house, and he checks every crevice of, of everything. Um, and he'll check the appliances. Same thing with the stove. He'll check the pilots. He'll check the fan, everything. Uh, the first time around, everything was fine. The second time around, he docked me for missing smoke detector, um, the window that they broke, which they did fix themselves, um, and other little stuff. But never once has he grown them up for applying issues. All right, what was wrong with it? With what, Your Honor? The refrigerator. Nothing. So I no, don't know when you... When you, what caused you to buy a brand new one? So, okay, so once the situation with the roaches occurred with the stove, I told my contractor, I'm listen, I'm you know, just take it out, you know, take it out because obviously I've had other rental properties where I've had left uh roaches behind from other tenants, and you can't get rid of them right away. You, I have to fumigate everything, and it's just not one fumigation that's going to take care of the problem. I have to get a year contract with Orkin. This is my second time around. Mm -hmm. So he went, went ahead and took it out um, outside. That night, him and his um, co-worker stayed late, pay, finished painting out the house. And same thing, the house was, or the kitchen was going to, was next to get painted. So they went ahead and moved the, uh, same thing, they moved this refrigerator out, roaches everywhere, same thing. And I'm like, that's, and he called me right away. I'm like, he took pictures and he sent them to me. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to deal with it. Just get rid of them. The only thing that he kept in there was the um, hood wrench that was fixed. This is an old house. Yeah. You're blaming them for these roaches. And I think the roaches are more a factor of the house than the tenant. Mm -hmm. uh, their testimony is the previous tenant had roaches. And so they're, they're, they have an infant. Um, and you're blaming them on the roaches. And they're blaming you saying your house had roaches. 
Um, and so because of the roaches, you remove the refrigerator? Yeah, I removed them. And then, okay, they want to say they told me about the roaches, which is not true. And they want to say that the roaches were there when they moved in. That is not true because, once again, when I bought the properties, um, the lady that I bought the properties from, she had recently just got a city inspection um, from the city. And once again, the city inspector walked through it or everything. Everything was fine. There was no nothing of roaches. There, or six months later, it was my turn to get this, uh, the inspection done on him. No roaches. He would have, right there and then, he, just like a missing uh, alarm, smoke alarm, he would have docked me right there. Because that's a, that's a hazard for who's living there, especially if they have a baby. Same thing goes without a working central air unit, a central or um, a heater during the, the winter. That's stuff that I got to get taken care of right away. Otherwise, I'm going to get fined by the city if they go and complain or if uh, the city inspector on the next visit comes and he sees that I haven't fixed that issue, I'll get docked $100 per issue. So never once from prior ownership to my three inspections of me ownership had I ever had a roach issue until now. And it would explain why they were demanding their security deposit hostile that very same day. And I told them, like, listen, I need you. The Sturgis Police Department officer had to be there. And he, he even explained to them, like, you can't do that. You need to wait 30 days and you need to provide your forwarding address. A Sturgis Police Department officer, I had to call them an officer because they were threatening me of, once they had evacuated all the house and I told them, you got to give me 30 days. Let me go through it one more time. I'll write your, your list and I'll write you your security deposit. I'm not new to this. Well, she right away got hostile on me on the phone. Her husband called me all hostile saying that, oh, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to move all my stuff back in there and good luck getting me out. Once the house had been vacant. I just happened to be right outside the Sturg uh, Sturgis um, uh, Police Department, and I just went in there and explained to them. And I told them, I listen, they moved out. Technically, their lease is not even renewed at this point, but they're over here trying to move back in with all their stuff. I don't want no problems or anything. I just want to either make yeah. a report or an officer can come out there. And sure enough, he came out there just so you know everybody was at peace. All right. Well, yeah, that's not how it works. You don't like immediately get your security deposit back. And I think you learned that. All right. Now, also in here is your contractor stuff. Uh, let's go through that. There's Orkin. There he is. JS Construction. Uh, back door replacement, $250. Front door replacement, $250. Garbage container disposal, $75. Laundry plumbing leak, $75. Total, $650. So let's go through those one by one. Uh, back door replacement. Okay, so prior to them leaving, like I said, they told me ahead of time. They told me, hey, Louise, listen, my young daughter locked herself inside the house, so I had to break the back door open, which was a wooden door. And I told them, no, that's fine. You know, as long as you take care of it, it's just like you did with the kitchen window you picked. He's like, yeah. Well, they went ahead and bought an interior door to replace an exterior door, non-insulated. And that's where the issue also arose that day why they were so hostile towards me because they had supposedly they had already paid the contractor js construction that's the gentleman that has uh, his house right next to mine to install the house for him mr castro told him like listen i don't have time um, i work and then i have my rehabbing my other house where i'm going to move in can you just please install this house for me or this sure. this store for me and sure enough when J uh his name is juan was installing it. So when I arrived with the police police officer to the house, 
I looked at that door and I know, you know, codes and stuff when it comes to that stuff. And right away I told Juan, I'm like, take that door off. That's not even a, that's not going to pass code. And sure enough, the second time when I brought Tim over, he said, no, that's not an exterior insulated door. So that was a door that was broken. All right. What about the front door? So the front door, same thing. When they left, so when they left everything, they left everything wide open, you know, um, once, uh, the police, uh, police officer left and everything, and they also left from the property. I tried latching the, closing the door. Like I closed it and they had put like a metal bracket. So it would latch on and I got, I provided photos and same thing that wasn't going to pass. And along with a broken window, like an insulated window that, that came with that door. I don't know while they were moving or anything, they broke it. But same thing, when Tim came over, he took a look at that and said, no, this entire thing is going to have to be removed. So the city inspector told you it needed to replace yes. the front door. Yeah. Um, the garbage disposal, Your Honor. So she did, like I said, she did clean that, um, that stove afterwards. But that morning when I showed up, there was gunk on top of the sink. So I could, we couldn't really tell. But once we started deep cleaning and we turned on the faucet, you know, the faucets for running water, we noticed that the sink on the right side, it, it wasn't going down. So we're like, okay, it could be like a clog or anything. So when Juan took the piping around, took it apart, there was a gunk of grease. So they put the stove grease down the yeah. okay. And I provided those pictures and I have yeah, it. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, so we're like, okay. We never left that like that. Um, now for the laundry plumbing leak, once again, even before they moved out or we had this incident, I had two inspections with the city and I provided you what he got me with. Um, they had a, they had their washer and dryer downstairs, no mm -hmm. leaks or anything, but once they moved out and everything and I went down there, th there was a bucket full of water and it was spilling everywhere. And they had uh, broken the like the bit uh, of it when they unscrew their washer. But they want to say that it was leaking, that the only way to stop that leak is, was for their washer to be connected. That's unheard of. Like, it, it'll leak regardless, you know. And the same thing. They tried. They put a black, past, uh, black plastic bag over it to keep keep it from leaking. And once again, that wasn't something that Tim got me for. All right, let's go through these one by one. The back door was broken and replaced with an improper door. So he got told by the city he had to replace it, and he did. The front door was broken, and he was told by the city he had to replace it. So he did. What can you tell me about the back door? Um, the, back. the back door, sir. Yes, I did. Went in there, broke it down. We fixed it. Okay. He said that it was not the right door. So the guy that he was, he contracted to do it. He said that it was one of those doors. And he's like, yeah, Luis told me to get one of these doors. And I paid for that door. So when the other contract, because it was another contract, that the other contract that the guy that was going to do it for me, it was the guy who working next door. So when how he was... You, in, how much did you pay for that door? I $150 plus the gas that he charged me. Oh, I wanted to give it to him, to the other guy that it was Luis worker. Uh, what, was about the, what about the front door? That was already like that, sir. He uh, knew about that bracket. I don't understand because the front door was white. It wasn't blue. It wasn't blue. This picture know. right here is it's, not that door right there. Yeah, this picture right here, it's blue. It's not white. And I have a picture of how the front door is actually white because I've taken pictures of my daughter in front of that that door and I've taken videos. So that door is, does not belong there because I had to go pick up my mail.
at the neighbor's house because they have mail and they still have the same door when I left. They still have that same front door, so I don't know what front door he replaced. Tell me about that. Your Honor, that is the front door. Like, I literally had to replace everything. I might not have pictures with me right now of the door that I replaced it, but I have a video of that door <laughs> when I replaced it. And once I, again, we have to check the house. You have to check it. I have a picture right here, but that is why I wanted to come in court because I wanted you to see it per perfectly for like in your eyes, not through uh pay, like the phone. But you can see right here in the back that the door, the front door is white. It's not blue. And you see the back right there. Yeah, and all the front, all the doors in the in the house were all white. There was no blue doors. There was only one blue door, but that new, the past lieutenant took it off, and it was that blue door that was downstairs. I don't know where it went to. It was already there when I moved in. I just didn't mess with it. But the front door was white, and I don't know how it ended up being blue on this picture. <laughs> Your Honor, it's white. It's just a glare. This is the door. They're looking at the... Hand that to the bailiff. That's the door. It had windows. It didn't have metal. Yeah, it had windows. There's, this has metal right here. The, yeah. It did not have this. <laughs> All right, this door looks to be in very poor condition. Is this the old door or the new door? That was the old door that was shutting properly on the first inspection. That, that was bracket, not I don't know where it came from. So when they moved out and I brought Tim over again, he told me that bracket wasn't passing. That I'm going to have <laughs> this thing up here at the top. Nice. I'm sorry, Anna. This thing up at the top? Uh, to the left. Yeah. Like, yeah, that copper. Yeah. Oh, well, this is a really, <laughs> door is in really poor shape. So is the door jam. Um, it's wearing tear so it's armor too. So, mm. uh, so yeah, that's that's not a very good door. And uh, so we were okay. living under a, a house with a door like that with a kid, no safety. Yeah, well, locked. But yeah, this is an old house. That was your responsibility then. Yeah, fifteen hundred dollars was a lot to pay for uh, this standalone house. There. All right. So we're struggling with the doors. Uh, then the next thing is the garbage disposal and those pictures. I think what happened is I think the grease from the stove got put down the garbage disposal. And uh, what can you tell us about that? The, the greaser, we, we never left it like that. Probably, like I was saying, it's an old house, sir. We have so many problems about it. He always uh, would tell me that, uh, to fix it myself. To fix it myself? Myself? Come on. And not just that. I mean, we only. I had a baby. Sir. I didn't. I never. I never pour grease down the drain we because I know that. what happens. I I actually throw it down in the trash. I would get mad with yeah, her. Yeah, on my trash. I showed her how to do that. And I just never did know, that. One person can talk at a time, but there's really some saying, pictures just, of a bunch of grease in the sink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> I only right. lived there a year. The past lieutenant lived there six years. We're talking about six years that she lived there. I only lived there one year. Yes, sir. Yes. That that past lieutenant, she's my friend. I talked to her. I I I lived with her because I was I actually was homeless, and she rented me that place, yeah, a little room. room. And she told me, I'm moving out. You can talk to the landlords and see if they want All to. Right, well, let's. Uh, do you have that friend's phone number? No, but I have her on social media. I can talk to her. Well, I'm interested as to whether she had roaches in there. I I think I might still have her phone number. Yeah, do you have it? Yeah. Write it down and then give it to the yeah. bailiff. No, I don't, Your Honor. I'm sorry. Okay. I can give her number, Your Honor. I have her on well, social media. Um, all right, well, this is the time for the trial, so if we could have got her, that would be fine, but it uh, doesn't sound like we can get her here. All right, so um, what else would you like, to, like me to know? Are you speaking to us? Yes, the defendants. 
Well, we did a lot of proof of how many months he left us without a no heater. Yeah, with an infant. I have witnesses too, and I have proof of the heater that I bought. Borrow. They let us borrow some heaters. Well, they let us borrow two, and I bought one of them. Even right, well, let's talk about that. That's, that's called abatement of rent. He's not asking for any back rent, but uh, you moved in in November, and mm -hmm. then you moved out in November. What months... When you said you had no heat, it means the furnace didn't work? Yes, the furnace didn't work. The thing with the furnace, it would always stop working. And he would, I would tell him, and he would tell me that he was going to send his uncle to go and fix it, but his uncle would take days to come and show up. And he All wouldn't right, even so, know about it. It's so, his obligation to know when his worker his, goes and fix the stuff on his house. Well, the fundamental thing is heat, water, heat, electricity, when were you without heat? In December and January. For the whole month? Yes, two months. Mm -hmm. No, it was a two month. Two months with no heat. It would only on January. It would only work for two weeks, and then it would go away, it would and then it, it would. would he would have to come and clean it again. Because I don't know what the guy said. He even showed my husband how to uh, fix it himself. We even me and Luis even fixed it one time because his worker. Did, did it show, show up? Well, what did, did you use for heat, heat in the meantime? I like heaters, I said, electric heaters. I bought two heaters, and I bought no, I bought one heater and two heaters. My grandma and my dad let me borrow them, which I still have currently till this day. Well, well that's very dangerous. Too. That's a good way to burn down an old house. Well, we were taking care well, of them, sir. And I have pictures of that, too, of the heater that I had on um, right here in this picture. You can see in the back the heater right here. I oh, had a that kind of, yeah, it's that kind of heater. Those aren't as bad as the other ones. The box ones. That's yeah. what my dad told me. He said that these weren't as bad and that they were a little bit more safer. And sadly, yes. and sadly, also, I had to boil water on top of my stove to keep the house downstairs warm for that way. Also, I can keep one in the basement for his pipes wouldn't freeze. And I even told him we were nice enough to not let his pipes freeze and put a heater downstairs and have one in our room because we all had to sleep in one room together to stay warm. He knew about that. My daughter had to spend his, her insides with jackets and uh, sweatpants when she could have been free with just one little pants and one little shirt all right um and so when did it get fixed in january yes that's when he started <clears throat> fixing it. that's when he showed up to fix it but it would break down every two weeks or every week it would work but then it would stop working they needed new, par need new parts but they never wouldn't it was also, I don't know. By, by february was it resolved Yes. I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. But I don't think it's right for me to go without a heater with a, like a seven-month-old baby. All right. Well, as I just said, there's an issue. It's called abatement of rent. Uh, Mr. Duran, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, Your Honor. So, yes, the heater did stop working <clears throat> January. I did have a contractor. It wasn't even my uncle. It was a contractor. I called him right away. He said he was going to go. This happened on a Tuesday where the heater wasn't working. They let me know right away through Messenger. I'm like, yes, I'll get a hold of them. Call the guy. I'm like, hey, uh, get over there, 205. They need it right away. Because I knew they had a little girl, you know. So he told me, yeah, I'll be there. Wednesday uh, afternoon rolls around. They contact me again. I was like, hey, the guy hasn't showed up. So I called him again, and he wasn't answering me at this time. But this time, I told him, you know what? Screw it. And I went with, it wasn't Dan Bayer. It was um, Hagedorn over there by the Harley Davidson. Hagedorn. And they went out there and got it fixed. And they told me the issue with the, with the heater it was, number one, the filter wasn't changed. I'll take responsibility for that. I should, when I get new tenants in there, I take care of that stuff. So the filter was a little bit clogged up. Um, but then the sensor, like the needle sensor, just needed to be cleaned and they got fixed. I don't know where they're saying two months. That's unheard of. Like I would never let that go. I mean, number one for the tenants and number two for my property. February, January went roll. It's all right. February, once again, the heater goes down. 
I go down there with Mr. Castro, and sure enough, since I already knew, you know, with the scrub, with the, a wool steel, clean that needle, it worked perfectly. I checked the filter, it was fine. So I'm not, I don't under, I don't, I don't understand where they're saying two months. Like, it's not my first time. On on. Yeah, I, I think, think it was, was out for some days during different months, but I don't think it was out for like a whole month at a time. Yeah. Uh, what can you tell us about that? The way you got it, there was no heat in December or January at all, but I think there were spans of time when there was no heat. Um, what can you tell us about that? What Mr. Duran says, it may have been out for a few days, but it wasn't out for a month at a time. No, December, it was off for a whole month. And January, it was off for a few weeks. Your Honor, he even told you the guy wouldn't even show up. So that's his responsibility to send so, somebody uh, else. Okay, uh, he, he, he agrees with that. But he's saying, so it was off the whole month of December? Yes. yes. And then did a few months did later. You, did you uh, tell him that? Yes, he knew about it, sir. He can't say that he didn't. All right, and it was off for a period of time in January. It's like the same thing with the fan oh, on the wow. stove. Yes. He took he took he three months. It. He didn't fix it until an inspection came, which was this inspection. That's when he fixed it. So he, how was it passing? Back? He can't even show. You. He probably didn't have a receipt of the fan when he installed it and when when it was installed. He he waited until inspection too to get his stuff fixed. I'm not lying. We said that we're not going to lie. Um, so, there are a number of issues here. Uh, Mr. Duran says that the tenants are 100% responsible for the roaches and is billing them for one year worth of roach treatment. Their position is the house already had roaches in it when they moved in. Uh, Mr. Duran bought two brand new appliances, a brand new stove and a brand new refrigerator to, to replace a used stove and a used refrigerator. Mr. Duran also replaced two old doors with two brand new doors and billed the tenant for those replacement doors, brand new ones. Um, the tenant claims that they were without heat the whole month of December and part of the month of January, which would abate the rent, which is $1,500 per month, not in its entirety, but some. So uh, that's where we are. So the uh, Orkin bill was 642.18, the brand new appliances were 1373 and the contractor was 650. There's also an issue regarding the abatement. Um, Mr. Duran, why, if there was a problem with those, um, there's always an issue in landlord tenant when something is replaced, do you get the value of something brand new or replace what was there? Um, this refrigerator was old and you're contending that they somehow broke it. Their contention is it was just old. Uh, the stove worked at one time that it didn't work. It probably is that whatever they did to clean it um, caused problems. Um, all right. Is there anything else that um, you would like me to know, Mr. Duran? I mean, Your Honor, we could go back and forth, back and forth. But at the end of the day, I'm withholding by the city inspector. Like, I follow their rules and everything. And like I said, before they moved out, this is, I have what he got me for. Yes. What Tim Crable got me for. Because he checked everything. If they're claiming that the roaches were already there, he would have caught that too. Two inspections ago, three inspections ago, if the refrigerator was working, you know, and your honor, we're not talking about one or two roaches. It was bad with the report that I provided. It was heavy and 
in the uh, report from Oregon. Yeah, and I don't know how to determine that. It's also a problem with bed bugs. Um, did they bring the bed bugs in or were the bed bugs there when they got there? This is an old house. And your contention is it passed inspection every time. So apparently it wasn't filthy. It wasn't. They, it, they, I'm sorry. So you're blaming all the roaches on them. I think the roaches were in your house and were their scourge. Um, they indicated they bombed it a couple of times. Uh, but you're right. You need a year's worth of, of uh, roach care probably to finally eliminate it. But it's very hard to get roaches out of an old house. Now, it's hearsay, but they indicated the previous tenant also had roaches. Um, all right. Um, anything else you wish me to know, Ms. Aguilar, Mr. Castro? Well, about the stove, like you said, it was working perfectly, but then we canceled the gas, and then he said... He re put it on. He, I have canceled it that same week. That, that like, he said that he that he did um, replace it again with, under his name, and then the stove didn't want it to work. Just the other day, I just don't, you know, I, just the next day. I how can that happen? Don't understand how the stove was working Thursday, and then Luis came along Friday and it stopped working. I just don't understand because. I, I don't know. That's not just, it's just wearing tears, sir. It's, it's an old house, like you were I saying. I don't know how long that's been there. I don't know how long that bridge's been there. I just know that I was there for a year and I did not cause any damages. The damages that I have caused was the window and the window in the front door, which I replaced, and the back door. I didn't replace that. Well, I was going to, but it, he kicked my guy out. The cockroaches are not going to show up to, to you and tell you, hey, Good morning. How are you? You know, they show up at night when it's quiet, That's when it's dark. Notice, huh? So how in the inspectors is going to not notice that? You know, he they knew about it. He knew about it. He cannot lie. We said we raised our hand and we said that we were not going to lie. So there it is, sir. We're not lying. I don't think anybody's lying. There's just a difference of opinion and a different perspective of viewing things. Um, I'm just seeing unfair. Sorry. Yes. Well, that's why we're having a hearing. Is there a way I can show you? I don't. I mean, I don't know how you I can send you. I have proof. I have messages where it talks. How Luis has poor communication with his mom. I have messages with his brother. And, about the heater too. And, about the heater. And, uh, all, right, I, all right, I'm gonna uh, give consideration for that. I'm gonna split everything in half. Um, or can six forty two point one eight divided by two is three twenty one oh nine. Appliances, you had them buy you brand new appliances to replace old ones that were there. 1373.76 divided by 2 is 686.88. Your contractor bill, you're replacing elderly beat up doors with brand new doors. And the other issues, I'm going to cut that in half. So that's 325. That equals 1,332.97. Now, it's hard to determine how to abate rent. Rent was $1,500 per month. I find it hard to believe that they had no heat during the entire month of December. Um, and you didn't know it. Your Honor, like I said, I stay on top of these things. The only time frame where I was absent and I had my little brother and my mom, you know, like help me out with this stuff. So, was when my son was, you know, born premature. So I had to be at the NICU. It was like a 
two months. Tax. My fiance and I were down there staying at the Ronald McDonald house, and I put that charge in them. So yeah, there was miscommunication. So, but other than that, I stay on top of it. Now the city will be on, you know, registration, tax, taxes, insurances, everything else. I stay on. Yeah. Well, that's prevailed in that I gave you fifty percent of everything that you asked for. 50% of the cost for the roaches, their contention is they should pay none. 50% of the brand new appliances, their contention was they should pay none. 50% of the home repair, their contention was they should pay none. Uh, so, 1,332.97. I didn't give them two full months of no rent. So the bottom line is this, you need to return $401.75 of their security deposit. I think you're trying to be a good landlord. When you're trying to do the best you can and you're trying to stay on the correct side of the city inspector. Um, and that's hard to do, it's expensive. Um, prices of rent are going up. I think had you not been involved with your birth of your child, you would have been maybe more on top of the heat. This would have come out almost as a wash if I hadn't made it for like of heat for four days. Some of these are just just small claims. So they're going to keep $723 worth of your security deposit going to get a return of $401.75. You thought you should pay zero on some of those items. I put it in half. Uh, and I gave you 14 days of no rent for not having heat. That may be an overestimate, according to Mr. Duran. It's an under, according to you. I'm doing the best I can. So... Mr. Duran, if you go out to the counter and give you a copy of the order, they'll clean this one up. Uh, do you have, do you sorry, have, do they provide you with the order and address? Yeah. Um, he can't send you the deposit unless he knows where to send it. That'll I, put it out here on the live. So you need to provide him with your Ford address, or he does not have an obligation to send you the money. I still have his phone number. I can send it through phone number if that's okay with him. That's fine. Text it to him. Uh, your neighbor's got a loud TV or something. We've been struggling with that the whole time. I'm not moving. Nothing background noise has gone. All right. That's a decision that probably nobody likes, but it does have some consistency. All right. Good luck, Mr. Gurney. I think you're trying to do this right and you'll do it. All right. That was longer than I expected. Yeah. Let's 